what's up guys welcome to my channel if you are new yet my name is divine i'm a musical five minominak drummer and a keyboardist i have been for many many years i started making these videos as a space for music lovers like myself to check out our favorite artists and break down some of our findings that make them so so fantastic make sure you follow us on instagram at the perseverance reaction in order to recommend the favorite singers for us to react to What's up YouTube? Hope you guys are feeling good. good. Today guys, we're back here with a new video. I'm in here with my beautiful It's a makeover. My name is Devena. Welcome to the best video. Right. So we're going to be reacting to 10 surprising facts about Islam. Hmm. 10 surprising facts about Islam. They're normally updated. So this is an updated one. Uh, this is our first time checking it out. So check out with you guys. You know how to do it? Stop this, will you? No, we got small. Let's get into it. Yeah. Islam is a religion that has become a staple here on FTD Facts, and there's still so much more that can be said about Islam on a whole. So guys, welcome back to another episode of FTD Facts. My name is Leroy Kenton, and I'm sharing just 10 surprising and interesting facts about Islam. So let's go. Starting at number 10, it's important to know that Islam is the name of the religion, and a person who practices Islam is known as a Muslim. The adjective Islamic usually refers to objects and places and things, not people, though. So you wouldn't say the Islamic people, you would say the Muslim people. And the term Mohammedism used to describe the faith we refer to now as Islam, but Mohammedism is an outdated term and some find it to be very offensive. You'll often find that Muslims do not describe Islam as a religion. Islam is often referred to as a deen, which comes from the Arabic word for way of life. Muslims believe that Islam is more than just a religious belief, but it's a way of living in accordance with one's religious faith. The argument, however, arises given the use of the term religion. So to others, the word religion and the phrase way of life are exactly the same thing. But I just wanted to just mention that. All if not most of you have heard the term jihad. And in jihad. the Western world, yeah. the word has been misused to mean holy war. Now, the word jihad does not mean holy war. It actually means to struggle or to strive. In a religious context, it means a struggle to successfully surrender one's will to the will of God. Now the term holy war gives a notion that the struggle is between Muslims and non-Muslims, which is totally the wrong context of jihad. There are also six articles of faith in Islam known as Arkan al-Iman, and these are basic beliefs that one must have in order to be considered a true Muslim. There's a belief in one God, the belief in all the true prophets of God, belief in the original scriptures revealed to Moses, David, as well as the prophet Muhammad. There's a belief in angels, belief in the day of judgment and the hereafter, and finally the belief in predestination by God, or in other words, fate. In relation to Christianity, you may have heard that Christianity and Islam are basically the same religion, right? Well, in the Christian belief, they believe that Jesus died for the sins of humanity, and that's completely foreign in the Islamic concept. So the two religions are not in agreement based on the central teaching that's there. Islam true. teaches that one day the day of judgment will happen and every person will be resurrected and will be accountable to God for every word or deed that they've done. So a practicing Muslim is yeah. always striving to be righteous while hoping and praying for God's acceptance. Whereas in Christianity, Jesus dies as a substitute for the sins of everyone that has lived in the past, present, and future. And because of that, people have the opportunity to even be considered righteous by God in the day of judgment. So two completely different fundamental central beliefs. That's Muslims amazing. also follow the lunar calendar or the Hijri calendar. The lunar calendar has about 11 days less than the solar calendar. Thus, every year, the months of the lunar calendar occurs 11 days prior to the previous solar year. There are two major holidays in Islam. There's Eid al-Adha, and that is at the end of the pilgrimage to Mecca, and Eid al-Fatir is at the end of Ramadan. And by the way, Ramadan is the ninth month of the lunar calendar when it's believed that the prophet Muhammad 
receive the messages of the Quran. Another interesting fact is that Muslims had created a house of wisdom, Beit ul Hikmat in Arabic, and it was active during the 9th to the 13th centuries, where both Muslims and non Muslim scholars sought to translate the world's knowledge into Arabic. Many classic works that might have otherwise been lost were preserved in Arabic and Persian and later translated into languages like Turkish, Hebrew, as well as Latin. Only three more facts left, and this one. One, very interesting. So in Islam, Allah has 99 names, and each of the name has a meaning. Yeah. And Muslims believe that God has revealed 99 names or attributes in the Quran. And it's through these names that one can come to know the Creator. And a few of these names are obviously I'm not gonna go through all 99 of them, but there's Ar Rahman, meaning the All Merciful. Oh, there's Al Alim, and that means the all-knowing yeah. or the omniscient. Yeah. Al-Wali means the protecting friend, patron and helper. Yeah. And finally, our razak that's the ever-providing. Yeah. yeah, it's pretty fascinating. If you want to know more, just Google names of Allah. Second last fact is that if all Qurans in the world today were destroyed, the original Arabic would still remain. This is because millions of Muslims called Hafiz or guardians or memorizers, depending on the context, have actually memorized the Quran letter by letter word for word from the beginning all the way to the end and as a matter of fact all chapters from the Quran recited wow. in each of the five formal prayers performed daily those are done to keep it fresh in the mind of Muslims and the five prayers are the Fajr which happens at dawn the Durr that's the noon prayer then there's the Asr that happens in the afternoon Maghrib is the sunset and Isha'a happens at night. Alright guys, so although the Arab world is often seen as the historical center and heartland of Islam, Arabs actually only make up 20% of the world's Muslim population. 30% of them come from the Indian subcontinent, and the rest of them live in Asia, outside the Middle East and the West. The country with the largest Muslim population is Indonesia, and that's home to 13% of the entire Muslim population worldwide. Islam is also the largest religion in the entire continent of Africa. Mind blown, right? Yeah, I know. It's usually yeah. just always associated with Arabs, especially here in the West. But anyways, guys, that's all the facts I have for you in this episode. And as we presented these facts about Islam, you probably just begin to see exactly where Muslims are coming from, or at least have a better idea. We do these videos to help educate people around the world about the different countries cultures, people, religions, all that good stuff in hopes to have each of us understand each other so that we can move forward, build bridges, make the world a better place. All right, and if you enjoyed this video, here's another one that you'll definitely love. You can click on the annotation. Guys, this was amazing. This was amazing. I think I knew some parts already. I knew some parts. The 99 name of Allah, I knew that a long time ago. I knew that. Um... The prayer, I, I know about us. Well, I never knew them by, I can never know them by name. The, um, the morning, um, afternoon. Said um, dawn at dawn, yeah. at noon, in the afternoon, yeah. during sunset and at night. Nice. I know they pray five times, but I never knew it was that pattern. Yeah, I, so, I like the way he explained that, because I've yeah. been wondering how the pattern works. Well, yeah. Well, now it's nice. Um, I learned some things. It was amazing watching this video. Now I know the time facts, updated version, guys. This time facts is totally true, and I respect Islam. Now I know you call them Islam is a religion. Muslim, that I know that I know that one says Muslim yeah. is um, people who are practicing. It's people, Islam is a religion. Yeah. So that those confuse people, especially if you don't know about um Muslim or yeah. really, like it's confuse you like. You call them yeah. Islam. Um, the last one he talked about when he said that Arabic, that they just cover 20% of it. I actually knew that one because I know that there are more people in Africa, there are more people in other places yeah. than in Arabic. I think I was like a couple like of years ago. Nigeria, Nigeria have one of the yeah, even high population. Egypt. Morocco too. Morocco, Egypt, they have high population of Muslims over there. Mm, that's true. That's totally true. It was amazing. It was amazing. Wait. I, I feel it's an interesting video, but I, I feel um, his number six point, I kind of had an issue with it when he said, like, 
when he's talking about Islam, like on the day of judgment, the resurrection day where everyone resurrects and yeah, isn't that you, how... you'll be accountable for your sins, accountable yeah. for the deeds you have done on earth. That's why the fact that Jesus Christ dies for our sins and birth about salvation does not mean that as a Christian, if you are to die and be resurrected on that judgment day, you won't be accountable for your sins. Your sins yeah. just don't disappear because Jesus Christ died for your sins. True, true. Like that's really clarified that. Yeah, no, I've because, watched this video before. He said the same thing. Because Jesus died for you on cross of Kara, it does not mean you are not accountable for sin. If if you commit an atrocity, or for instance, you murder someone, you killed someone, and you do not ask God for forgiveness, or you steal, you do not ask God for forgiveness, on the day of judgment, you will surely be accounted for it. For sure. That's how we believe. That's how our religion is. You don't say Jesus will come and save you. Save you day. No. As long as you do not pray and ask for forgiveness. Oh God, this is what I have done. With an open heart, Lord, and, I'm sorry. And not just asking for forgiveness, changing yeah. your ways. Your ways too, because you can't just say, I'm sorry for what I did. Then tomorrow you go out and Don't kill me. Again. So just like you, you're going to do it. Okay, I'll ask God for forgiveness later. Who are you playing with? True. That's true. So this was nice. And um, that number six was corrected already. Now, so he was getting that point wrong. Christians, we don't, we don't like Jesus come and speak for us. It would have been nice though, <laughs> if that's how it actually yeah, works. A lot of atrocities would have been happening now. Yeah. A lot more atrocities. So he's, he got that point wrong. You guys, make sure you guys cross that. We Christians don't believe Jesus come and speak for us. We believe that on the day of reservation, you'll be accounted of your own sin. Yeah. Each person is accounted Each of person. their own sin. Your parents won't be there to help so, you. Whatever you yeah. have done, you're going to you're on your own. account for it. So this was amazing. Comment down below what you think about our video. Give us a thumbs up. Share this with us. Many of us can subscribe to YouTube channel, guys. Know how to do it. See you guys in the next video. Make sure you stay. I just bought a bag like an old lady. I'm back wood smoking. I don't own papers. Pass that 808. That don't don't shake her. Oh, bitch, you know I'm grinding like a pro skater. Baby, mama bugging. I'm so quick to hit ignore. Buku bitch, in my bed. I got scales.